Hello everybody and welcome back to the first episode of our new Terraria modding intro to C-sharp series. So today we're going to be learning how to actually program uh, in C-sharp, which is the language that Terraria was made in. And one of the reasons why I'm deciding to make this a series is because I often see people uh, in the comments or even in the Discord uh, asking for very simple fixes to some of their problems. And it looks like they just don't know how to program, which is perfectly fine. Uh, but I think a lot of people could benefit from this. You know, I see a lot of people uh, give me error messages where it's just a missing semicolon or something like that. And I just have to point it out to them and uh, explain to them why that's happening. So I actually got myself a little PowerPoint set up here, and we're just going to go through, uh, we're not going to be in the PowerPoint the whole time, uh, it's just here uh, for me to organize my thoughts in a little bit more uh, clear manner. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. So the series is going to be about focusing on teaching concepts and then actually applying those concepts uh, in coding itself, in creating an item or in a practical scenario. So we're going to be hopping over uh, between these PowerPoints and code over here, so that way you can actually learn stuff properly. Uh, we're going to learn how programming works at the very base level, and we're going to get you familiar with how computers also process code, because uh, it's pretty important that you understand uh, what's going on in the background. And then we're going to get comfortable writing our own basic code in C-sharp, and then understanding why something works, rather than just copy and pasting and praying that it works. Uh, that way you can actually replicate it or change it at the very least. And then finally we're going to teach you how Troy's code base works, so then you can completely code uh, build and publish mods by yourself. And I know that sounds like a lot, but it's actually not as much as you think. The first part is going to be about files and data types. So paths, namespaces, usings, and variables. So let's just start off right away with paths. In your computer, when you want to find a file, you actually have to specify a directory. And we like to call these paths. So for example, your desktop on your computer is a path. It's a place where files can be stored. The same could be said for you know, your mod sources folder, which is where all of your mod files and projects uh, are stored and saved. And these tie in directly with namespaces. A namespace, let me actually go ahead and uh, take over the Visual Studio over here. Right here we have our code for uh, a sword. And there's a bunch of other cool stuff that I've put on this sword, which we're going to talk about later. But essentially you can see at the very top right here, we have our namespace. The namespace specifies the path in which this item is actually stored in. Just know that a namespace is used to specify where something is. Okay, and next we have usings. So I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with C or maybe C++, but at the very top of uh, your code, you include header files, uh, as well as other files that you might have created yourself using, I think, the hashtag include studio.h or you know, math.h. Those are just a couple of the very common ones. In C Sharp, we don't actually do that. We use uh, using instead which is the same exact principle, it's just a little bit different syntax. Uh, and what that does is it just allows you to reference and use code from other libraries and functions and stuff like that. And for an example, and also for variables, which is uh, coming up right after this, let's just hop into the code file again. And you'll see at the very top, I have a bunch of these usings. So this is basically just saying, I want to grab the code from these code bases and use it in my project. Because once you build your mod, the compiler is actually going to take all these, take all the code from these libraries and put it right over here on top uh, of this file so you can actually use it. We'll talk more about the pre-processing part of code later, but for now just know that this allows you to use uh, predefined functions from different libraries. And for variables, so variables are a little bit more interesting. There's a lot of different types of variables and we'll go over some of the basic ones right now. So let's actually go back into our Visual Studio file again and we're going to go ahead and type out some stuff. So if you're familiar with any basic math, you'll understand the concept of an integer. An integer is just a whole number, be it negative or positive, and it's probably going to be the most common data type or, or variable that you see on C sharp. And it's pretty self-explanatory. You can just say int uh, my variable equals, I don't know, seven. It can really be equal to anything as long as it is an integer uh, that is completely valid. And the next type we have is a float. So a float is just a decimal value uh, that goes, I believe, up to seven or six decimal points. I forget the precision uh, on a float, but I believe it's up to seven or six or even eight possibly decimal points. Um, but yeah, you can just say float, you know, my variable two or whatever equals 9.7F. It's important that when you create a float, 
you specify it with that F right there, otherwise it will not know. Uh, and then there's actually another way you can specify a decimal value point, and that is a double. Now, the difference between a float and a double is that a float takes up four bytes of memory, whilst a double takes up uh, eight bytes of memory. And a double also has more precision in its uh, decimal point, which means you can actually have a larger decimal point than if you had a float. So you could say something like one point, well, let's see how many digits of pi. One, four, one, five, nine. I don't know anymore. Uh, something, something, something. Uh, but you can get pretty precise with the double. So that's what it's usually used for. Okay, so you can just get rid of that there because we don't really need that in our sword code. But that's essentially some very basic variables you'll be seeing. We'll talk about some more uh, advanced ones and things like vectors later on. But uh, for now, let's just keep going here. So let's just quickly talk about C Sharp. C Sharp is an object-oriented programming language. So an, an object-oriented programming language means that code uh, is run by objects, which means we can give objects certain attributes. Like you might have seen, if we actually take a look again at our code file here, you can see we have item.damage. We're giving this item, our sword, a property, an attribute, which is incredibly powerful and allows us to do a lot of amazing stuff, which you can kind of go down a huge rabbit hole on going into Tori source code and checking out all the stuff uh, that they've predefined for you already, which is really awesome. And once again, if anyone is familiar with uh, C++ or C, it's kind of like an extension of those languages. It's like a mix of Java uh, and C++ almost. It's got a, a few quirks of both of them. But let's quickly talk about uh, how code is actually compiled and how it's run. So you might be thinking, oh, you know, I'm super, you know, high level. I'm, I'm really getting down and, and gritty with the code. You're not really getting down and gritty with the code. C Sharp is a high level programming language. It allows you to think very abstractly without having to worry too much about the details. Because essentially what happens is your code in C Sharp is converted uh, into assembly language, which is just very minute instructions that are uh, actually moving things around in the hardware and the registers. And then that assembly is then converted uh, into ones and zeros because the computer can ultimately only speak uh, in ones and zeros. Everything boils down to ones and zeros. And here's some cool things I found after doing some research on uh, Terraria coding. So it started development in 2011 and it uses C Sharp and it was programmed using the Microsoft's uh, XNA framework, which means for all of you people out there, uh, not a game engine, just the Microsoft XNA framework, which is, you can think of it as almost like a coding library, kind of. Uh, and it was released before Minecraft beta came out. So to all of you, uh, Terraria is just Minecraft haters out there. Keep that in mind too. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about paths. So a path, it defines where a file is stored on a computer. So we talked about how we can specify where a path is stored using a namespace. Just remember that it has to be specified when we are looking for a file. The computer isn't magical. It doesn't automatically know where a file is. You gotta tell it where to look first. And we already went over namespaces, but there's a few other important things that you should keep in mind. If you specify your namespace wrong, you will get an error because the computer is gonna try and find a file that doesn't actually exist. To you, you might be thinking, hey, what's what's going on here? It's why why is it why am I getting an error for this? It's because you actually haven't specified the namespace. Uh, and they're also very important for organization. And make sure to make folders and subfolders for this if you have a large project and you do have to specify the subfolders in your namespace. So keep that in mind. Remember to do that, otherwise you will get strange errors and you will not know why. So a uh, using basically just tells the computer to include an external file. Uh, we already went over this, but I just have a quick slide over here uh, that you guys can just read if you want a quick review of what a using is. And the same goes for variables. There's actually one we did forget to talk about, uh, which is the Boolean. So the Boolean is probably the easiest one to remember because it's either true or false. It can't be anything else. One, true, or zero, false. It's pretty straightforward. And you can even see, I uh, put it in nice capitals over here for you guys to read. Um, and I also quickly want to mention that to do operations on a variable, unless you are typecasting, the operand must also be the same type of that variable. So like you can't add a float uh, to an integer. That just doesn't really work out because an integer by definition has to be a whole number and a float by definition has to be a decimal. Although obviously a float doesn't need to have a decimal on it. So you can add an integer value to a float, but you cannot add a float value to an integer. So it's uh, a little bit tricky when it comes down to that. 
And also make sure your variable names are clear and concise. Don't have like what I just did, where I put like my var, because like what, what does it what does that even mean? Like what does that mean? Here's an example of some bad code. You know, int some number. What what does some number mean? Like my variable sucks. Like what what are the, what are these? So that about sums it up just for this quick introduction here. Um, I'm gonna be going more in depth into the actual code itself and some more uh, interesting data types and uh, things in the next episode. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Also make sure to check out the Discord in the description. Thank you to the patrons that I have over here. Uh, you guys are very awesome. I appreciate all of the support. And also make sure to check out my game Earthward down in below in the description. I'm working really hard on that and I'm trying to currently uh, raise some money to fund an animated trailer for the game. So I would super appreciate it if you guys would help me out there. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.